the uh, call for revision of our liturgical texts came in the 1960s. Um, almost as soon as we had the 1962 Book of Common Prayer, there were voices saying, well, we've got to look at contemporary language rights as well. So it goes back quite some time. Some experimental work done in, and published in Wee, wee Bookies um, and, and used as, as for trial use and evaluation through the late 70s. The Book of Alternative Services itself as a, a collection came together and was um, authorized by the, the national um, uh, decision-making body of the Anglican Church of Canada, the General Synod, in 1985. This is life of prayer, language of prayer, and that has to do with the heart. It has to do with the imagination, it has to do with the heart, it has to do with the depths of, of who we are. So it's no surprise that we get attached to particular forms of language, particular ways of doing things, because it becomes such a part of us. Where the, the challenge is, the, is that um, the life of prayer, the life of the spirit, the life that God is calling us into is also about continually moving and being attentive to, um, to all of what is happening and change in the world and in our own lives. And so the language of prayer in liturgy, in, in our worship together when we gather on a Sunday morning, um, and of, of private personal devotion is always connecting with tradition, with the past and with, with what we know and taking us into places that we don't know.